Welcome to the 10th Men Podcast, where we discuss the ideas, theories, and principles to help you live a wealthy, healthy, and happy life. My name is Felix. I'm a graduate entry medical student and content creator. And my name is Harish, and I'm a third year medical student. Hi, guys, and welcome back to another episode of the 10th Men Podcast. This is part of our medical sub series. We've already done one episode. And this episode, we're going to be talking about interviews. My name is Felix. And as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Harish. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. All right. So this episode is all about preparing for medical interviews. This is an extremely important part of the whole admissions process. And it's especially true if you're applying to a university where actually once you get an offer for interview, they pretty much don't look at anything else. They just look at your interview performance. And regardless of what university you're at, the interview plays a huge huge part in determining whether or not you get an offer and the different types of interviews and how to prepare for it become very important. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about what medical interviews actually are, what are the different types, why you should actually prepare, how you should prepare. We're going to point you towards some resources. And lastly, we're going to finish up with some top tips for the interview. So just a reminder, I'm about to start graduate medicine. So I've gone through the graduate medicine process and Harish is doing undergrad med. So we both have a different side of the coin. So to start off with, Harish, what are the different types of medical interviews, at least here in the UK? Well, there are, as far as I know, two types of interviews. The first type of interview will be the panel interview. We just have a series of doctors and professors just asking you questions. And the other type is the multiple mini interviews where you have seven or eight stations where you just go from booth to booth answering different questions with different interviewers. I think that shouldn't be any different from the postgraduate interview right felix yeah it's basically the same thing like it's essentially most of them will be mmis very very few are panels so within most universities nowadays they're moving from the sort of traditional panel interview where essentially you have a bunch of doctors asking you questions within a room for a set amount of time i believe this is something that oxbridge does and they're moving towards mmis which is multiple mini interviews which essentially you have different stations that test different parts of the medical school admissions criteria and those are basically the two types broadly speaking but uh, before we move on i think i would just like to answer the most common questions that are running through potential medical uh, students minds so the first one is how do you actually feel before the interviews well i'll be honest everyone would have the butterflies before the interview starts it is very very common but once you've attended the first interview everything else would feel pretty much much more relaxed because you have already gone through the experience so right before the interview would feel stressed but once you're in the room with the interview you're pretty much good to go now another thing everyone is worried about is the most biggest concern is how are the interviews actually conducted that was also my biggest concern because you know it's multiple mini interviews and you have no idea how it's going to be conducted and you don't need to worry because the facilitator when you attend the interviews that they would actually explain on how the interviews would proceed so if you just want a rough overview usually how it goes is you wait outside a station and then they'll ring a bell you go in speak at the station for like seven minutes they'll ring another bell that's a one minute mark and then after the interview ends there's another bell and then you move on to the next booth and in the case you do not know where the next station is there will be facilitators to guide you there so these are the biggest worries another one of the bigger worries is what are the interviewers like i can tell you they are really really friendly if you answer the question at the station in a satisfactory way and you have some time left you can actually just sit there and just have a cup of water they won't grill you non-stop don't worry about it and i can tell you there will be some stations where the interviewers just will keep a blank expression but even in those stations i'm pretty sure everyone will just do well on to the next question felix tell me why should someone actually prepare for the mmi So this is a very common thought that students have when they're preparing for interviews because a very traditional advice is that, oh, just just go into the interview, just be yourself, you know, just be completely honest and that's it, right? I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, absolutely, you need to be very honest and you need to have integrity, but preparing is another cup of tea. You need to understand that getting into medical school is a process and it's incredibly competitive. And like I said, some universities will just clear everything before the interview, like your UCAT scores, your degree, everything. It's just the interview performance 
that start to count. And that's how you'll be ranked up against all the other candidates. So be yourself. But at the same time, in order to answer the sort of questions they ask at interview, you know, they'll be asking you things like why medicine? Why do you want to be a doctor? Why do you want to do this? Or why do you want to specialize in that? Things like that. For you to have a well thought out answer, you need to reflect. You need to understand exactly why you want to pursue this career. And it's not a case of sort of scripting your answers. It's just a case of sitting down with yourself, being honest with yourself and saying, okay, why do I want to do this? Because as Harish was saying, a lot of people think, how should I feel about the interview? What are the interviews going to be like? For me personally, you know, you know, I wasn't tense. I was ready. And I wasn't ready to go in there and be grilled by someone who doesn't want me to get into medical school. You know, they're sort of guarding the gates to the offer. I was just going in there to have a nice chat conversation. You know, it didn't have to be an interview. It could be an uncle or an aunt or a friend. And all they're going to ask you is, why do you want to do medicine? Or why do you think communication is part of being a good doctor? Questions like this. And if you've reflected on it, it's actually a very fun process for you to sort of explain and walk someone through onto why you're passionate about something. And if you're being honest, that will really shine through in your interview. So the reason you should prepare is really a case of not scripting your answers, but understanding and reflecting on why you want to do this thing that's going to take you five years to complete or four years to complete and then it's going to be a lifelong thing you know it's a very important decision and it's just reflecting on that decision and understanding yourself to a higher level that's basically what this preparation is so let's talk about how exactly you should prepare and and what sort of resources we use when we prepared you want to kick that off Harish yeah sure um now I'll be talking about how we prepared but the most common question I get asked rather than how did I prepare is what were the questions asked could you please share the questions for the interview <laughs> well I am sorry to say I can't actually discuss the questions but but hold on don't be disappointed there is a way to find out what the questions are and there is this one bible there's this book if you just flip through that book I can tell you you're prepared for any medical interview of any kind it's the ISC medical interviews book. You can get it secondhand for like £20 or $20, depends which country you're in. And it mm -hmm. pretty much talks about the different stations you could encounter. So if you can just read through the book, basically just prepare all the questions and you're actually good to go. Just a word of advice, please do not copy the sample answers that are given in the book. That is the most dumbest thing anyone could ever do. Sorry, but that's really dumb because I can tell you the interviewers will easily pick out what are the sample answers and what are the genuine experiences. <laughs> so please do not memorize the sample examples. And one more thing. I know if you're like, you know, tight for money and you can't get the book, just type in ISC medical interview questions in Google. You can actually get the whole list of the interview questions just without the answers. You can just play off on that. Yeah, that should be good. You can just practice off it. You're actually good to go. But I can tell you despite such preparation techniques there are some stations you just can't prepare for one of the most common station is a role-playing uh, station mm -hmm. so there will be an actor and you got to like you know assume this role of like a facilitator or a student counselor and then you're supposed to solve the dispute or whatever these kind of situations you just got to wing it i guess i mean there's nothing else you can do there are some things you have to know you can't give the wrong advice and there's also another station that you can't prepare for that is the ethics station there will be stations where they ask you some ethical questions questions it's always safe to have some uh, ethical knowledge so you just need to read up on medical related ethics articles and yeah you're pretty much good to go but i can tell you i'm not lying the iac medical interviews book and just preparing it in front of a mirror that is all i did and i can tell you out of all the three medical interviews I attended i got in in all three i got an offer from all three so yeah. if you just read that book you are good to go. I'm not flexing. I'm just telling you the power of that book because that book helped me out a lot. You can ask Felix on this. Are there any uh, preparation techniques that's different for postgraduate medical students? Yeah, so... Funnily enough, when I was preparing for my interviews, I like I, I obviously went up to Harris and be like, yeah, man, give me the tips. He basically said the same stuff. And obviously now I'm going to do graduate <laughs> medicine. So the book is very good. So, yeah, for me, preparation really came in three steps. It can be broadly categorized into reflection, improvement, and finally repetition slash simulation. So I'll go through these steps in, in order. So reflection is really important. Like I said, when these interviewers ask you a question, they're expecting you to have already thought about it or thought about concepts around medicine so that when they ask you, you actually have a well thought out answer. And this just shows that you, you've really thought about going into this career and the difficulties of this career and the rewards of this career. So with the reflection, 
for me, preparation began at the start of my work experience. What I would do is I would keep sort of a daily log of all the things that I've seen as a care home worker, a care assistant, or when I was in orthopedic surgery, things that I saw. And when it came to the interview, what this did was it really helped me jog my memory. But more importantly, what I did was I went on all these websites, right? And all these medical universities often have this succinct bullet point list of characteristics that they test during their interview. So it will be things like probity communication, empathy. These are the things that they test in the interview. And what I would do is I'd copy and paste these characteristics and then I would match my experiences to these bullet points. So for example, I would be like, okay, I had to talk to a child the other day and explain how the diaphragm works using a model. Okay, what what does that match up? It matches up to communication. That's how I did it. There's an example that I can use in the interview should I be asked about communication. And eventually what happens is over time, you get these really, really good examples of where you've shown it. And that obviously comes with more experience and what you've actually done with your work experience. Alongside that, writing. So David Perro is this guy I follow on Twitter. He talks about writing a lot and he says that clear writing is clear thinking. So writing stuff like this down not only helps you jog the memory, but it also brings clarity to your thought, which is absolutely paramount in an interview where you're explaining to someone how your thought processes work, how your reflection processes work, why you think medicine is for you. And articulating that is so, so important. And it can really show when the interviewer is listening to what you're saying. So that's the reflection side of things. And you should really reflect on why are you doing something? You know, why are you communicating to a patient? How are you doing this? How are you communicating to them? Is it through a diagram? Is it through just talking to them? And what are you actually doing? What are you telling them? So that's a reflection process. And then comes repetition. So basically use this ISC medical book, find all the questions and just repeat them. See how you fare, see how you can answer them. And essentially what you want to try and do is pretend like it's an interview and try and simulate it. For me, I would record myself uh, answering certain questions. I would look at my body language, my eye contact. How am I articulating myself? What sort of examples do I use? So the next step would be to repeat okay, to attempt these questions and see if all your experiences that you've already matched up with these qualities, you can actually articulate them in speech. Then once you've repeated a few questions, now it comes back down to reflecting and improving on them, right? So when it comes to improvement, these are where the resources come in. So with me at Newcastle University, again, they have an excellent career service. So they had a practice interview sort of module where you'd go in, you can book an interview and specifically for medicine, what they would do is they would actually ask you what universities that you're applying to. They were really Really nice. They were like, okay, so you're doing MMI. Okay, we're going to set up a station just around MMI and we're going to let you practice. So just check your careers resources. Obviously, buy the medical school ISC medical book. It's just your Bible for preparing. It's got so many examples, so many frameworks. You know, I think the main frameworks was Peel, so point, evidence, explain, link, which is what you should use in your interview answering. Then you also have this other framework that Newcastle University uses. It's called the STAR framework, which is situation, task, action, results. So so buy that book. It's got everything in it. And the other resources I used was for graduate medics, I would recommend going one step further and buying the ISC medical for specialty training interviews. So when you become a doctor and you apply for core training or specialty training, you also have to do interviews then. And it's very similar to this, except just at a much, much higher level. So I actually bought the book for the specialty training and not everything is relevant. You know, it's not super high yield information in there, but if you have the chance, just have a skim through like I did. There are some specific frameworks frameworks and some specific examples that are a bit more in-depth than the undergraduate one and it will help you stand out when there's so many people applying and when it's competitive. If you know to a deeper extent the scenarios and the frameworks that someone applying for specialty training uses, then it can work and give you that slight edge which may make you stand out. And other than that, really just use the book. Uh, the BMA Ethics Toolkit is very good. Talks about a lot of ethical scenarios. But again, don't just read everything. Don't go into that mistake of going, yeah, I'm going to read absolutely everything on the internet. Look for high yield information. Look and match your preparation to the medical school you're applying to. And of course, we can't, you know, have an interview podcast without mentioning good medical practice, which is very good. It gives you the foundation of what and how a doctor should act within their scenarios, within their job. So that's very good as well. So yeah, a bunch of frameworks, a bunch of resources, but ultimately you just need the book, a couple of online resources and a lot of practice. Once you've done all of 
this. This is when you want to get your friends, your family, other medical students, Harish, <laughs> other medical students, you know, uh, you know, any medic friend you have, just get them in and ask them, you know, can I have a practice interview with you? That's why these courses and things like that are so good because you get live feedback. It's probably not the actual knowledge itself. It's just having someone there who is ready to analyze you and give you feedback. That's really important. So yeah, that's basically how I prepared. Damn, that's actually hard. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> But since we are short for time, we need to move on to the next part of this podcast, which is what are the top tips for the medical interviews? Felix, we'll start first. Okay, I think we'll go one by one, okay? Oh yeah, I'm down with that. So my first tip is to learn about body language. When I went for the interview, I had a whole page of just on how body language, how to keep eye contact, how to present yourself correctly. I went into depth, you know, how do you shake hands? What does shaking hands mean? How do, how do you greet them? How do you keep yourself engaged and interested in the conversation? So learn how to keep eye contact and learn how to be very, very good under pressure. You don't want to sort of crack and break when an interview asks a question, you're like, oh my God, okay, I'm going to panic. So practicing body language because that's such a huge part of communication and understanding that. Maybe I'll make a summary sheet and put it on my website when it launches. So look out for that. Cool, cool, cool. Well, to be honest, I didn't go that far about, you know, learning body languages. But the first thing I did was to understand your own personal statement, understand and memorize your own personal statement rather, because they could ask questions from your uh, personal statement. So you just pick out like excerpts from a personal statement and question you on it. Yeah, that is my first tip. What's your next tip, Felix? My second tip would be to, probably the most important tip is maintain your integrity. I know at the beginning we said, you know, you should reflect, you should think about these questions before you go into the interview, but absolutely do not lie in your interview. With body language, with micro expressions, these interviews have seen maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of medical students come through those doors. Do not lie to them you know, be very, very honest, have that integrity. And that comes from knowing why you want to do medicine. Because if someone asks you, okay, why do you want to do medicine? If you've already thought about it, you don't, you don't need to make something up basically, <laughs> because what you say is true and you've already thought about it and you have that depth of thinking. That's why it's really important to think it through beforehand. And also when you're in the interview, just be alert. Don't be tense, be ready, be calm, but be very alert. Listen very carefully to what the interview is saying. Pay a lot of attention to what they're saying and then slowly, just take your time think through your answers so yeah just be very honest and be calm how about you harish my second tip is do you know the ic medical book go through that book and pick out the most important questions so one example would be tell me about yourself the most common mistake many students make is they talk about the academics oh yeah i got an a star in my biology i got an a for my chemistry you have to understand the fact that you're at the interview, it means you have proven yourself with the academics. So you don't have to talk about academics. Talk about something more personal, like, you know, about your passion. Talk about something outside the academic area to define you as a person. That's what they're looking for. So what I would do, once I pick out these questions, I would actually open up a Google document or a Word document. I know Felix said don't script the answers, but in my way, what I did was I wrote down the answer so that I know what I'm actually speaking about. Wrote down the answers, spoke in front of a mirror, and and then as Felix said, you know, practice it with your parents, your friends, or any other medical students that you know who have succeeded in passing through the medical interview. And I think, yeah, that's my second tip. What's your next tip? Yeah, with the whole scripting thing, I would definitely agree with that. Just have some bullet points so that all the memories are in the forefront of your mm -hmm. mind, you know, but don't like have a whole answer structure like in the ISC medical book and just say that word for word. It's so obvious when you're being robotic. Okay, my tip is read and consume as much as possible to supplement your thinking. So one of the things that I did was to have the vocabulary and to have the words and understanding to articulate how I feel about something. I couldn't always do it. So what I would do is I would actually read books of surgeons. For example, Henry Marsh, he's an extremely famous neurosurgeon. I would read his book, Paul Kalanithi. He wrote the book, When Breath Becomes Air. I would read these books. I would watch the junior doctor programs on BBC and I would actively reflect and I would take notes on moments where I thought, wow, okay, that's such a great way of putting what I already feel like. I just didn't have the words or the vocabulary to explain it. But you know what? Henry Marsh put it really nicely. So I'm going to take that quote and I'm going to expand on it. And I found that collecting these quotes and snippets 
it really expanded my thinking and expanded my perspectives and how I thought about each situation. They will add more words, more vocabulary and mental models that you can use to explain things in the interview and articulating how you feel about something and why you feel about something in the interview is extremely, extremely important. And who better to learn it from than someone who is already a neurosurgeon or already a doctor? You know, and that's not to say you should completely copy them, but learn from them and figure out how they articulate their feelings towards surgery. So yeah, just consume as much as you can and reflect on that consumption to make it useful towards your interview preparation. How about you, Harish? So my third point is about the role playing station. Not going to lie, it's all about acting. For this station, what you have to do is act a bit more understanding of the uh, character's problems, nod your head, try to offer constructive feedback. That's all I can try to say for this station. There's nothing else you can do about the station apart from you maybe trying to practice with your friends. That's, a, that's about it, I guess. Is there any other tip, Felix? Yeah, so my final tip is just these two products I recommend. So when I went the Warwick interview, I lived quite far away and it was like a four-hour journey. The trains got cancelled. But luckily, uh, even though I got there like at midnight, I was staying over. So it didn't mean that I was late for my interview. So one tip I'd say is just stay the night. You know, it's not very expensive. And if it's a relatively large university, they'll have their own on-campus sort of conference suites where they regularly host people and they tend to be not that expensive. So stay the night is one. Yeah, so there are two things that I really recommend as a product. The first one is a L'Oreal Paris Men Expert Hydra Energetic Anti-Fatigue Eye Roller. That's a mouthful, but essentially what it is is this thing you roll underneath your eyes that removes like any bags or like darkness underneath your eyes. And it just kind of like, if you've been up all night or not up all night, or if you've been, you know, having some late nights preparing for this interview and you want to look fresh, you want to look, you know, completely radiant, use this, this is pretty good. The second thing is, okay, this is like my super, super secret tip, okay, is to buy this thing called an Optrex Actimist Eye Spray. And what this is, it essentially hydrates your eyes. You spray it over your eyelid and it hydrates your eyes. One thing people forget about interviews is that you have to be making so much eye contact. Like you're, it's basically a staring competition. You have to make so much eye contact with the interviewer. And if you're in a room where there's a bright light or something, your eyes are going to dry out, you're going to be super sensitive, etc. But this eye spray helps you keep your eye sort of hydrated and not irritated so you can keep that eye contact without like halfway through starts to like cry and you're like oh sorry I'm not crying you know I'm just I just have dry eyes you know so this kind of helps you out with that but yeah th those are all my tips so my final final point is about finding out more information about the universities because this is one common thing I've come across forums they will ask you why did you choose this university so my tip before if you're nervous and you have nothing to fiddle with go onto your phone find out information like what are the achievements of this university look at the clubs that interest you so in my case i like uh, frisbee so try to look out for a frisbee ultimate frisbee club look at the medical faculty see what specifically are the achievements for the medical faculty and not just about the university try to find out more about the place itself so in the case of maybe i don't know warwick you have to find out more about warwick newcastle you have to find out more about newcastle based on whichever place that university is in try to find Find out what is the selling factor of that place so in the case they do ask you that question you are pretty much prepared that is my final final tip because that's what i always do before every single interview i'm always fiddly so i just open up my phone just find out more information about the university and one more thing as felix mentioned i think already read up on the gmc the four pillars of ethics if you can read up pretty much on the gmc checklist you're good to go yeah the four pillars of ethics is literally you could answer any literally any ethics question as long as you have these four pillars it won't be extremely sophisticated but if you you just you just don't know where to start if you know the four pillars you can come up with an answer you can it's like your ultimate guide when i went for the warwick interview i remember sitting down and i remember reading just like the warwick sort of magazine thing that they put out and in there was information about Warwick University, what sort of achievements they had. So any information that you can find while you're waiting, go for it. Take any advantage you can. And finally, to summarize, we've covered what medical interviews are. So you've got two types, panel interviews, where you've got a board of interviewers, and then you've got MMIs. We've covered why you should prepare and not just sort of just turn up and be like, yeah, I'll just be myself, full stop. Why you should look into the ethical principles, reflect on your experiences and understand how to articulate what's actually going on inside your head. We covered how you should prepare we've included the resources things like the isc medical book using youtube videos documentaries your life experiences and of course your work experience that you're having as well 
and using your resources around you, your friends, any medic friends, anyone who will basically sit down with you and give you a mock interview. And lastly, just using yourself. You know, if it's a mirror, it's a mirror. If it's recording yourself, just recording yourself, answering the questions within the book. And the absolute best resource, again, we can't recommend this enough, is that ISC medical book. It's not a sponsored podcast, by the way. It's just that we love this book. It's really good. It's worked for both of us. And on that side note, I'm also selling mine. So if you want one... <laughs> get in touch with me on instagram so it's been used by two graduate medics already and they've all both got in so you know it's like the half-blood prince book from harry potter and lastly lastly we talked about the top tips for the interview so things like body language being incredibly honest keeping your integrity listening very carefully to the interviewer consuming everything around you and trying to use it within your interview if it's relevant we talked about how you should continue to repeat and practice. You should find out more information about the university and its surroundings and a couple of products as well that I recommended. And that's about everything that should get you through. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And also remember the personal statement. So, yeah, because some universities, from what I've read, do ask questions about your personal statement. So before we end off this episode... I think we have to go back to the old traditions, which is what well, the one insight of the week. Felix will kick it off. Okay, great. So my insight of the week is basically, I don't know why, but recently I've just gone back to watch Harry Potter, not the movie itself, but I've spent a lot of my time this week. <laughs> basically, what I do is on YouTube, there are these clips where some like random channel will string together and weave together these clips of different harry potter movies and they'll say things like oh goblet of fire but it's a meme and what it is is basically they'll take every single like a lot of the famous scenes from each of the movie and they'll zoom in on one just one of the actors right and they'll basically show their micro expression because obviously if you think about actors they're acting and they're reacting individually but when we watch a movie we only look at whoever's the main person on the screen we don't actually pay attention to the surroundings so what this does is it basically zooms in on individual actors and like shows their micro expressions i just find that like super funny so ever everyone should type it in harry potter but it's a meme it's hilarious but yeah that was my <laughs> insight of the week what joe's harish my insight of the week is about reading books so recently i've gotten into the habit of taking notes while i actually read a, a book like a self-help book but I got into the bad habit of taking notes while I'm reading the book for the first time. So that put me off from reading a lot. So I didn't feel like reading anymore until Felix gave me the advice. Like, you know, maybe it's a very simple step. Read through the book and then come back to it and then make the notes. I'm not going to lie. It changed my life drastically because I used to hate reading books because of the fact I had to make notes instead of enjoying the book so now i can actually enjoy the book i know it's a bit of an extra step where i have to come back and make the notes but the thing about making notes is when you make the notes you can actually try to apply what you have learned to your life because i think that's what that's the whole crux of actually why you're reading a book because you just don't want to blindly consume knowledge but actually want to try to apply it to your life so that you can get the maximum out of the book so yeah i think that pretty much concludes this episode and for more podcasts, tune in to The Tenth Men on Spotify and iTunes. It has been released on iTunes every Sunday. You can find us pretty much on every popular platform, Twitter and Instagram. Just remember, this is a listener-centric podcast. If you have any topics that you would like to have discussed, tweet or DM us at Tenth Men. Tenth as in the numeral. For Instagram, it's just Tenth Men without any space. For Twitter, it's Tenth underscore Men. If there are any further queries, you can reach us through Gmail at official tenthmen at gmail.com, tenth as a numeral. If you'd like to personally reach out to us, you can do so through Instagram for me at proboost, P R A B O O S T. What about you, Felix? Yeah, if you want to reach out to me personally, just at Felix Bajoy or at Felix Bajoy underscore some variation, you'll be able to find me across all the platforms. And also, we just wanted to give a personal thank you to all the people that have been supporting us, sharing the podcast and giving us nice comments and nice feedback and criticisms, etc. We're going to take them all on board, as well as all the subject ideas you've been giving us and all the nice comments. So thank you so much for that. And uh, hopefully we can cover some of the topics that you want us to cover soon. Until next time, keep safe. Tenth Men out. out.